Hi, Dave Williams here again with the third and last video showing how to design a counter with an arbitrary sequence using JK flip-flops. So we left off in the last video coming up with this state transition table showing the current and next states as well as what the J and the K values need to be for each one of the three flip-flops in order to force those current to next state transitions. So the last thing to do is to treat this as a truth table where these Q2, Q1, Q0 in the current state are the inputs and then each one of these six columns are the six different outputs. We've got six truth tables here, the same inputs for each one of the truth tables. And for each one of the truth tables we will come up with a Boolean algebra expression. So J2 equals something, K2 equals something, J1, K1, J0, K0 all, all equal to something. This is a fairly straightforward process, one that you should be fairly familiar with, and that's using converting these truth tables into Carnot maps and then using Carnot maps to come up with the simplest expression for each one of those six outputs. So here we go. Let's do J2 first. The inputs for J2, so J2 equals something, and the inputs for J2 are Q2, Q1, and Q0. And the values for filling in the Carnot map come from this column right here. And then we only need one group. And the expression then will be J2 is equal to not Q0. And repeat the process for K2. only need one group and we get K2 is equal to Q1 and Q0. Now do the same thing for J1. For this K map we need two groups. There And there, that group of four. And we get J1 is equal to not Q0 or with what this group is, which is not Q2. K1. And we get K1 is equal to not Q2. And repeat the process for J0 and K0, but I won't do that all here. But what we end up with is J0 is equal to not Q2 or Q1, and K0 is equal to not Q0. So putting everything together, we remember that we are creating this synchronous counter using JK flip-flops. There's three bits needed to represent all the states, so we need three JK flip-flops. The outputs of each one of the flip-flops correspond to Q0, Q1, and Q2. They are all going to be synchronized by a common clock. So this common clock goes to all three of the clock inputs. And the signals going into each one of the J's and K's of the three flip-flops are based on the logic that we just determined. So here is my J0, and we would need the logic to implement not Q2 or with Q1. I'm not going to draw the gates because I don't really have that much room. The logic going into K will be not Q0. The logic going into this J is J1, which we determined was not Q0 or with not Q2. The logic going into this K, which is K1, we determined was not Q2. The logic going into this J, which is J2, is Q0. And the logic going into this K, which is K2, is Q1 and it with Q0. So we build up a circuit like this using whatever design tool you need, three flip-flops, 
a few gates, a common clock, and you create the counter that counts in the sequence that we designed for, which was seven to three to one to two to five to four to six and then back to seven. There was one state in this three bit counter that doesn't that didn't fit into the loop and that was when all the bits are zero. If that's the case, if all the bits are zero, we don't want to get stuck in that state. So we defined our system so that if we are in that state, we transition to state seven. So with these three videos together, I've shown you how to design a synchronous counter with an arbitrary sequence using JK flip-flops. So I hope you learned a little bit in this set of videos and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.